Hi everybody, it's Miss Carrie with Good Friend Art Studio and welcome back for some mo fun Monday art. Um, today we're going to be making this cute little koala bear and he's a project that I've done a number of times and they turn out so amazing. So I've been wanting to get back to this one and I'm excited to do this one with you. All right, so let's talk about the art supplies that we're going to need today. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're going to draw these eucalyptus leaves and color them in, and these are oil pastel. I've used oil pastel before. Um, they look just like crayons, except they're oily. And the nice thing about oil pastel is that when you paint on top of them, the oil acts like a resistant and like a barrier. And so the um, watercolor doesn't go on top of it, it goes around it, which is kind of a cool technique. So if you don't have oil pastels, we can use crayons. You just might have to press down a little bit more to get that wax of the crayons to resist the watercolor. So for our paper that we're gonna do our leaves on, we want that to be a thicker paper, like a watercolor paper or tag board or card stock, just not so flimsy that the water will go straight through it. After we get that done, we're gonna put that piece of paper aside and get a smaller piece of paper. And I just have regular printer paper, copy paper. Um, so grab a sheet of that because we're going to draw our koala on this piece of paper and we're gonna use oil pastels again. And so if you don't have oil pastels, you can use chalk pastels, you can use colored pencil, um, but I wanna get something that kind of smears because we're gonna use our finger as a blending tool and we're going to smear all of this oil pastel around our koala so he's cute and gray when it's all done. And then we'll cut him out and we'll stick him on our background. So we have a lot of things to do today. It's gonna to turn out super cool when we're done. So let's get started. All right, we're gonna start with our background so it has time to dry. So let's get out a couple of different colors. I'm gonna be using a bright, dark, darker green and a lighter green, but I'm also gonna get out a blue and a purple because I just want it to be nice and bright. And then for the branches, we of course need to have a brown. And then I have this sort of lighter brown. It's um, called burnt sienna. It's kind of like a rusty brown. So I'm gonna use that one as well. All right, I'm gonna scooch you up so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's start with our pencil and eraser, and we're just going to sketch in the branches first. So I'm gonna come over to the left-hand side of the paper, and I always do Y-shaped branches, except they're a little bendy. They're not perfect Ys, and this one's gonna be laying on its side. So the top of the branch is gonna come up and down like that. And then I'm just going to go backwards and make it thicker as I come backwards. Let's see, I'll keep going down to there. And I'm gonna add a second part of this branch. So I'm not gonna bring it all the way down. I think I'll have another one come down this way. And I'm gonna add a few other little twigs coming off of this one. See how I just kind of go back and add these little shapes that come off? And it doesn't have to be a perfect line. In fact, sort of the more wiggly it is, the more natural it'll look. All right, so we have a nice good branch. And then I'm gonna put a little twig coming off on that side and maybe on this side too. So we have some good spots for some leaves. And I'll do one more. Let's see if I'll do a little twig coming off this way so we can have some leaves hanging down there as well. Okay, now that we have our branch in place, 
let's start adding some leaves. And eucalyptus leaves are long, skinny leaves that are pointy on both ends. So I'm going to just put little clusters. So see how they both come to the tip of that little twig? I'm gonna do a couple of leaves on each twig. And then let's have some coming up this way too. So the interesting spaces that we're making in between the leaves, those are called negative spaces. And when you're doing a piece of art, negative space is just as important as positive space, the things that you're drawing, because that creates its own interesting shapes. So I'm always trying to think about that when I'm putting in things like leaves or branches or flowers. All right, so let's throw in <clears throat> some twigs down or some leaves down here. All right, so we'll have some that are just sort of coming off the page. Maybe there's one that goes that way. And then we'll have some that hang down here. You can even have them overlap so that one is a little bit behind the other. And just keep in mind that we have a koala that's going to sit kind of right in front of all this stuff. So some of it will get behind the koala bear, and that's okay. It'll still look really good. All right, so that space is filled up. I want some up here, but I don't want to put a twig going up. So we're going to pretend that there's another branch up high here and so we see some of these leaves sticking down. And so that fills up that space. All right, I think we're ready to start coloring them in. Let's start with the branch. So I'm gonna outline the branch with a dark brown color. on both sides of the branch. I'm just gonna do a nice thick line of this like, chocolate brown color. And then when I get down to where it's super skinny, you can just fill up the whole thing. Did I get them all? I, nope, I did not. I'm gonna go a little bit further down here. Okay. All right, then once I have the outline done with the dark color, I'm gonna take my lighter brown, this is called Burnt Sienna, and it's just a, sort of a reddish brown color. And I'm gonna fill in the center of the branch and with oil pastels, they're kind of cool because they blend together. If you overlap one color on top of another, they sort of blend and make a nice gradual transition from one color to the next. And I really like that about oil pastels. Crayons can do the same thing, just not to the same extent, not quite as good as our oil pastels. So that's why I'm always saying, get out your oil pastels. They just work a little bit better with this kind of stuff. Okay, so I don't need to go further down because those are too small to have the centers highlighted. But I can finish this one up.
Okay, let's switch to our leaves. So I'm gonna start with some green, two different shades of green, a darker green and a lighter green. And I've decided that I want, I think I'm gonna put my darker green on the left side. So when you are um, working on shading things in a picture, you have to decide which side is gonna be your light side and which side is gonna be your dark side. So for instance, on this leaf that I'm working on here, I mostly did dark green on the left-hand side, and then I'm gonna take my light green and fill in just a little bit on the right-hand side where if light was shining in, it would just hit that leaf a little bit. All right, let me do another. And we're gonna have leaves in, in a couple of different colors. So I'm not gonna paint, I'm not gonna color in all of my leaves this, with this same technique. I'll switch to a different color set in just a minute. And again, the oil pastels kind of blend on their own when you overlap them when you're coloring. All right, let's keep going. I think I'm gonna do one more up here. I'll lift up my tape so it doesn't, there we go. All right, so we have three up there. Let's um, switch to a different color now. Let's get out our blue and purple. And we're gonna do the same technique with blue and purple. Now, if you look at these two colors, the purple is darker than the blue, just by a little bit. Um, they're both kind of dark, but I think the purple is a little bit darker. So I'm gonna use the purple on my shadowy side. And then I'll do blue on the brighter side. This might be a toss up. I don't know if the purple is that much darker than the blue, but I'm gonna say it is. Okay, so let's do this one the same. I think the hardest thing about oil pastels is that you have to push really hard. And so sometimes my hand gets tired when I'm coloring so many things with it. All right, so that's kind of what I want these little clumps of leaves to look like. So I'm gonna keep going and I'm just gonna choose a couple of the greens and a couple of the blues in each section. We could even add, let's add a third combo in here. So we'll have some purple and blues, but watch what we can do. We can add a third choice just to mix it up even more. Let's see, I've got my purple, my blue. Oh, I did not eat lunch before I started teaching. You might hear my stomach growling the whole time. <laughs> that was a mistake. Okay, purple and blue, but then we can also do a blue and green combination. So that gives you a third color combo that you can choose from. So we would do blue as our shadow color, and then we would do green as the brighter color. And I really like the way that looks. So I'll throw some of those in there as well. All right, let me peel the paper a little bit so I can get a better coloring. Okay, let's do that again. I like that. So green on the bright side, blue on the dark side. We'll do a bright green here.
Now this one's a little different because the leaf is horizontal, it's not hanging down. So I'm imagining that if my sun is coming from the right hand side, that it would come down and would make the top of the leaf a lighter color. So sometimes you have to think about where's your light source, where's the sunlight? Okay, let's throw in some more purples. This one's so far down there, I'm gonna make the whole thing purple. Just a little bit more to go. So back in January, koala bears were all in the news because Australia was having so many fires and there was injured and homeless koalas and kangaroos. And since we've started having our own quarantine, you haven't really heard about how those little guys are doing. But I would imagine there's still a lot that are healing. And the vets are taking care of them all over the place in Australia. So let's do another dark one in the middle. All right, three more leaves and then we're done. Let's see, the question was, are we allowed to do a fourth choice? Oh, you mean of color mixing the leaves? Oh my goodness, yes. So if you, and this goes for any project, if you think of some way that you want to add to it to make it your own, that's what being an artist is all about. So certainly, you could add more different color leaves. These are just suggestions. You can take this art project and completely turn it into your own by making your own color choices or even changing where the branches are. It's entirely up to you. Sometimes there'll be a technique that I want my art students to learn, so I'll ask them to try it my way. Um, but when it comes to colors and things, that's where you can really play with your ideas. Okay, so we've got it all colored in and we're ready to add our background color. And we're gonna do this with watercolors. So I just have a sort of a medium round paintbrush that I'm gonna be using, and my regular pan of watercolors that I use all the time. And I'm just going to paint around these with a couple of my cool colors. So my greens and my turquoises and my blues. And I'm gonna see if I can get these um, pretty cool colors to all blend together as I'm painting it. 
So you could do one of two things. You could just paint straight on here, and that's one technique. Another technique, if you want it to blend really softly, is you paint the paper with clean water, and then you go in and you add the color to it, and it just blends a little bit more softly. I think for this project, I could go either way. So I'm just going to jump in and paint it because I kind of like bolder colors. And I'll just try to go fast so that the paint doesn't dry on the paper before I get to my next color and then I can overlap. See how those two colors blended? So to do this, you have to sort of go fast so that your colors can blend on the paper. And I'm just choosing between my turquoises. This is my darker green color. There's a teal color in here that's really pretty. It's a little bit darker. Yeah, I like that one a lot. So I'll add lots of that one. And again, this is one of those things that you can make your own choices as far as your colors. So let's say you didn't like the greens and the blues and you wanted to do something different. Let's say you said, well, I really like oranges. All right, so the only rule that you have, only thing you have to pay attention to is that orange probably wouldn't look nice with green. So you have to stick to the same color family. If you're going to switch to a background that has more um, oranges, you need to stick with yellows and oranges and reds and pinks. Um, if you're gonna stick with cool colors, you're going to be using your blues and your greens. You could even throw in some purple if you wanted to. And that would be interesting. And the reason why we pay attention to those color families is because if you were using green, watch this, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess up on purpose so you can see what would happen. If you were using green and then you went to an orange and go, oh, I like orange. Well, that didn't work. And the reason why it didn't work is because opposite color families don't blend together nicely. They actually end up making what I call a mud color. They just kind of don't look good. All right, that I know that's where my koala bear is gonna live, so I didn't mind messing up right there. So even though that's a little fussy right there in the middle, we'll cover it up. All right, that's my favorite color right there. I think I'm gonna use a lot of that one. So just be aware of those color families when you're blending your watercolors. And then you won't end up with muddy watercolors. They'll be nice and vivid. can get some regular blue in here. Lime green, of course you can use lime green. Really any color on the color wheel that is between yellow and purple would look great mixed into the backgrounds. 
So you could even go back, let's see what would happen. Yellow is one of those colors that can be on the, the cool side or the warm side. So if I took yellow and I kind of blended that in with my green, then it's gonna make that green pop even more and be an even brighter, sunnier green. So you can do that too. Let's go back in, add some yellow on top, and that'll make an interesting color. All right, just a little bit more. And then we're gonna put this piece aside to rest while we're working on our koalas. I'm just darkening up areas that I think need to be a little darker. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna take this one down and let it dry while we're working on our koala bear. And then we're gonna switch to our small piece of copy paper. And I'm gonna put a little tape on the bottom so it doesn't run away from me while I'm working on it. Okay, we're gonna draw our koala bear with pencil first and then we will um, add some details with our um, oil pastels. All right, get them even closer. Okay, our koala bear should fill up almost the whole page. So I'm going to put three fingers at the top and just leave a little bit of space so that we have room for his ears. The first thing that I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw the branch that our koala bear is hanging on to. It's gonna start from the top right corner and kind of wiggle down to the bottom left corner. And our koala bears are kind of wrapped around this branch, this tree branch. And it's about two fingers thick. That's about how, how thick I'm making it. And see how wiggly it is? We're not going for straight lines because we're drawing something in nature. So it needs to be wiggly, so it looks like it belongs in nature. All right, now that I've got that tree branch, now I can put in shapes for where my koala's head's gonna be. So see that mark that I made? I don't want his head to be higher than that. And I'm gonna do kind of a circle shape, I'm trying to see how about how big it is. Ah, it's about the size of the palm of my hand, look at that. So it's pretty big. And then we're going to put a line and I'm just gonna go straight through my branch just so that I can get the shape I want. We're gonna, he kinda looks like a two ball snowman, doesn't he? So we're going to use those two shapes as our basis for our koala bear. And now that I've got the shape, I'm going to erase the line that I drew th straight through there. And just clean up the inside so that you can see what I'm doing. All right, let's start with his head. Our koala has two very fuzzy big ears. And so one of these ears is going to go back behind our branch. So I'm gonna draw a line that kind of sneaks back there. And then my other ear is gonna come down and right along the edge of the paper, I'm gonna use that as my guideline. It's gonna circle back in. And then I drew the bottom edge of the other one too. So he's looking a little Mickey Mouse like, but he'll look more like a koala in just a few minutes. And then inside of this ear, I'm gonna draw a second line there. 
and a second line there. And then do like a little smile to connect it like that. All right, we're gonna make all of this fuzzy looking so it won't look, it looks a little strange at the moment, but once we start making him fuzzy, he'll look better. Okay, we'll work on his face last, we'll save that. Let's add his arms. So one arm is going to come from his, his right side and curve down in front and hold on to this tree branch. So I'm gonna start up at the, where his head and his body meet, and I'm gonna draw a big scoop like that and go all the way across and then go onto the branch just a little bit. The top side of his arm follows his chin, so you don't have to do much except trace that line again and then continue it till you hit the tree. And then we're gonna put three little fingers. So here's one, here's two, here's three. And then he, he's even got little nails. They use those nails to hang on to the trees. So let's go ahead and draw that. All right, his other arm is stretched way up here. He's reaching up. So we're gonna draw just sort of the back edge of his arm that's reaching up and his fingers are wrapping around. So there's one, two, three. So you just kind of see his little elbows sticking out there and we'll give him his little fingernails on that one too. All right, so let's get some legs in here. His leg is going to scoop around. It's gonna be one big motion from his back to his leg. So let's draw that line down and then we'll do three little toes, one, two, three, and then we'll curve it back. This final leg is gonna do the same thing on this side. It's gonna curve down and stop around the same, same place that the other one stopped. Let's give it one, two, three little toes, and then I'm just going over that tree branch line so you can kind of see where those end. And you can give them little toenails for hanging on. All right, let me clean up some of the marks. So we need to erase the tree line that's going through his foot or both of his feet. And then there's a tree branch line going through his arm. So I'm gonna erase that. All right, and we have the outline for our koala bear. So we're ready to jump in and look at his face. I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make this come out a little bit further. Sometimes when I see it on the monitor behind me, I notice a change that needs to be made because I'm standing so close to it. So that's why sometimes you'll see me kind of make a little correction. It's because I caught a glimpse of it and I need to fix it. Okay, so let's work on his face. His nose is, the top of his nose is about the same height as where his eyes are. So I'm gonna do a little curve. That's for the top of his nose. And on each side of the curve, I'm gonna do a circle for his eye. And then we're not gonna draw a lot. We're just gonna do like the little top lid, the top of his eye opening, and then just a little line on the bottom. So we're not drawing details of his um, eyes. We're just kind of giving some simple shapes. Okay, so the top of his nose curves down, sort of like an upside down U. It's a little bit flatter on top than an upside down U. And then he's got a little bump down because that's where his nostrils are. And his mouth 
kind of tucks up underneath there. So you can really only see a little, little edge of his mouth on either side. And we'll give him a little coloring so that you can see that that's his bottom lip there. So that's all the details that we have to do for his face. That's pretty easy, huh? Okay, I'm going to pick a peach color to do some details for the insides of his ears and a little bit below his mouth. So I'm gonna go with peach. You could do a light pink too, but we're just gonna add a little bit of color to the inside of his ear. on both sides. And then I'm just gonna do a little bit right underneath his nose cause he does have a little mouth down there. And so the fur kind of turns into more of this like peachy skin color where there's less fur. All right, and that's all I'm doing for that part. So let me jump into my black. Now here's where we're gonna add the fur. Oh, sorry, I shook ya. All right, the fur is going to look like fur because of how we draw our black line. So on the top, I'm just gonna do a simple little line like that. And then on the top of the ears, I'm gonna do the same thing because his fur is going to be hanging down. So when I get to, let's say, this line here where his ear is sort of flapping over, I'm gonna start doing some little jagged fur lines like that. And then the bottom of his ear, I'm gonna do it again. Some jagged fur lines. And now I'm really gonna start. So around the whole part of his face. I'm gonna do those fur lines as well. And then I'm gonna start by curving around the bottom of his arm. But once I get going down, I'm gonna really give him some good fur down there. And then I'm just gonna outline the top edge of his fingers and give him a little fingernail like that. All right, let's do the same thing. So it's smooth coming down his leg, but once you get down there, you can give him some fur and then let's do the top edge of his little toes, color in those fingernails. And then I'm gonna do some fur on the front edge of his leg as well. So you can see that all the fur is pointing down. You really don't want fur to stick straight up. I guess maybe he might have a little bit, but for the most part, his fur is gonna be hanging down like this. All right, so there's toe number one, toe number two, toe number three. All right, let's do his other elbow. All right, did I get everything? I think I did. All right, we're not gonna do his face until we're done blending because I don't want to smear his face. Let's start um, by adding some white. Before we start blending all these colors in, I wanna take a white, or if you have a gray, you can take a gray and do this too. And I'm going right next to the black and overlapping it. So there's a little bit of blending happening already. We'll make it look even more blended in just a few minutes. All right, so just taking the white and going right next to the black so it blends just a little bit inside our koala bear's fur.
Okay, now we need to get our blending tool out. That's our finger. All right, so for the finger, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start on the outside edge and pull towards the center of his face. So see how I'm going all the way around. Now, if you're using chalk pastel, this works the same way. Start on the outside edge and pull towards the center. If you're using crayon, you might have to color a little further in because I don't know that crayon's going to blend quite as well. But you could also use pencil and get your pencil marks to work. All right, I'm gonna do the same thing. See how I went from the bottom and kind of pushed it up so that it blended and I'm just putting my finger and, and rubbing it down each finger, each of his little fingers, so it blends just a little bit there. All right, let me do his ears. Now I'm not gonna blend down into the peach. I'm gonna push it up, because I want that peach to say, stay nice and clean. And for the bottom edge, I'm just going up to where the peach starts and stopping, so that I don't get that peach all like dirty looking. All right, let's do his bottom leg. I'm just rubbing my finger over his little toes. And by now, you have a nice and dirty blending tool. So even just using your finger on the paper, see, it's going to leave a... A mark there. All right, did I blend everything? I think so. Okay, let me go ahead and I'm just gonna put some, I think I'm gonna do brown for his eyes. I didn't talk about brown for his eyes, but I'm going to take that same lighter color brown, the orangey brown, and let's color his eyes in. Just leave the little lines there, but color the center of the eyes with a brown, and then we can go back with a black and do black pupils in there. His nose is completely black, so I'm not gonna do any blending. I'm just gonna fill this in with my black oil pastel. All right, I think we are ready for our tree branch. So let's use the same colors that we used on our other piece of paper. I'm gonna use the dark brown on the outside of the tree branch and light brown or that reddish brown on the inside of the tree branch. All right, so here comes the dark brown. I'm gonna go really slow and try to fill in between those toes. And oil pastels, while they're wonderful and smooth to work with, they also break really easily, so, <laughs> or like, especially if you're pressing down hard like we are. Okay, now that I have a nice thick outline for my tree branch, I'm gonna go back with my lighter orangier brown color and fill in the center. All 
I'm going to carefully go around his little finger. He looks pretty good. I'm going to see if I can outline his mouth and outline his little eyes because I feel like they're getting lost. They're just not dark enough. All right, I think that looks better. Much better. Okay. So now that we have our koala, we are ready to cut him out. Now, I'm noticing one thing, and if you have the same situation, pay attention. See, I, I have skylight showing through right there, and I don't want it. Um, so I think what I'm gonna do is just take my light green from when we were doing our background and fill that tiny little hole in so that when I cut this out and I glue it on top of our branches, it's not gonna have like an obvious white spot there. All right, I'm gonna take him down. I'm gonna put back up my branches and hopefully it's mostly dry. Let's see. Yes, I would say mostly dry. It's still a little bit damp, but I think it'll work. If yours is still wet, you may wanna hang on for just a moment or if you need it to speed dry, you can always use a hair dryer to dry this. You just wanna stay a good eight to 10 inches away from your paper whenever you're using a hair dry to dry. You have to stay further away. Okay, so I'm ready to cut out my little guy. So I've got scissors. I'm just gonna follow the outline of my koala and the tree. I'm gonna keep them all together. So bear with me, I'm gonna do some speed cutting over here. And for this project, I like to use a glue stick. Bottled glue will work as well, but I just feel like a glue stick's a little bit better when you're gluing copy paper. So I have my little guy glued out or cut out and I'm gonna apply some glue and then I think I'm gonna stick him right there in the middle. See how I'm pretty close to touching. Let's see, I'll move him further down. So my branch touches the bottom and then it looks like I'll just have to add a tiny bit of tree trunk at the top. All right, so I'm going to apply my glue on the back side. And just make sure you go all around those edges so that it doesn't peel up on you. Okay, so I'm gonna line up the branch on the bottom and then push it down. Make sure I get all the way to the top. And then that little extra spot, you might not be able to see it, it might be off camera. If you have a bit of tree branch that you need to add, you can just draw right on top of your background paper to extend that further up. All right. And ladies and gentlemen, we have a koala in a tree. Super cute. So 
I hope you have fun with this one. I can't wait to see your koalas because I think it's a really fun art project. So when you're all done, post them so I can see how you did. And I will be back tomorrow with another fun art project. So I can't wait to see you again. Have a good day. Bye, everybody.